All right, this lesson talks about using the trigonometric ratios with a calculator. What I have here on the screen are two different triangles, and they're similar, meaning that, of course, their angles are the same. Um, they're both 30, 60, 90 triangles. The reason I have them both on here is I wanted to show you uh, a property about the trigonometric ratios that's pretty neat, and that is when you're figuring out your comparisons, your SOCA, TOA, sine, cosine, and tangent, the same sine, cosine, and tangent will appear for any angle, no matter what size the triangle it, what size triangle you're working with. So if we take a look at, say, this 60 degree angle here, then if we're going to find the sine of that 60 degree angle, the sine of our 60 degree angle means we need to take the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, right? So the opposite side of the 60 degree angle would be 4 roots of 3, and the hypotenuse would be 8. Yeah. So the sine of our 60 degree angle is 4 square roots of 3 divided by 8, which reduces 4 goes into 8. So we end up with the square root of 3 over 2. Now if we do the same trick with this larger triangle over here, we have our 60 degree angle here. On this triangle, our opposite of our hypotenuse, sine here, 60 degrees, our opposite over hypotenuse is 8 roots of 3 over 8. Well, if we have, I'm sorry, 8 roots of 3 over 16. <laughs> Wrong number. 8 roots of 3 over 16. If we cancel 8 into 16, again, we end up with square root of 3 over 2. So you can see I get the same value no matter what size triangle I'm dealing with, as long as I'm dealing with the same angle. And that'll work if you were to run through the same uh, trick with a 30 degree angle. You'd find that it works out just the same. And it works out the same whether you're dealing with sine, cosine, or tangent. All of those ratios are going to be the same no matter what size triangle you're dealing with. Now, that's kind of cool because it means that if you just went through and calculated a bunch of those, you could make a table of what those angles were. And that's what this is, for example. This table right here represents the basic sine, cosine, and tangent uh, values for 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. Anytime I have a 30 degree angle, the sine, or in other words, the opposite side of that angle divided by the hypotenuse in that triangle, will always end up being 1 half. And anytime I find the cosine, it's going to be square root of 3 over 2, and so on and so forth. So that tells us that we could find missing sides of a triangle just by knowing what the angle across from that side is and of uh, either other side in that triangle. That's pretty cool. And that's what we're going to do in this next lesson. The other thing you can do if you don't have a, a handy dandy table nearby is bring in a scientific calculator because calculators keep track of those same ratios. So if, for instance, I were looking for a 30 degree angle and I wanted to know what the sine was, 30 degree sine gives me 0.5. And you can see that the sine of a 30 degree angle here is 1 half, which of course is the same thing as 0.5, right? If I were looking for, say, the cosine of a 45 degree angle, 45 cosine 0 0.707, which is the same thing as the square root of 2 divided by 2. Now just make sure your calculator is in degree mode, DEG up here, and then put the, usually you'll end up putting in the degree measure first, 60 and then type in sine, cosine, or tangent. Tangent of 60, 1.73, which is the same thing as the square root of 3. So that's what we're going to use in this lesson here. If you have a table, use it. If not, grab a calculator. I'll probably use a calculator in the lesson because it's a, it takes a few more steps than the table. You can just look up the values on a table if you have it.